if you were to text someone, I'm using my keyboard right now, would they think it's the musical instrument or the computer accessory? Hmm. What's up guys this is the hundredth time I'm doing this right now so hopefully I'll have to pause and restart this film again um, so yeah weird intro right I watched uh, two documentaries and normally I do reviews of films but these are very interesting for those who don't know or have been living under a rock I listen to metal music yeah um, it's probably not gonna go away I'm old now, so obviously I've brought in my horizon on uh, musical genres, but I'm still a diehard metal fan. All genres of uh, metal, actually. I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just going to tell you the documentaries I watched. Um, you know, I took the time out uh, looking for documentaries, and I didn't have to look too hard because there's not that many. Or I should say, not that many well done documentaries. This one, uh, which you can actually watch on Prime. So one's on Prime, one's on Tubi TV, and they're free. Well, I mean, if you're prime member and all that but anyway uh i thought they're really exciting informative and uh like i said i already know about the music but it was cool seeing how their humble beginnings and i do mean humble um kind of came to be uh so yeah the first one's called get thrashed uh not trashed thrashed and it was directed by um rick Ernest. it's the story of thrash metal it's actually in the title it came out in 06. So I'm pretty sure, aside from Prime, you probably could watch it anywhere. And basically, it just tells you the story of Thrash Metal. Now, uh, Thrash Metal had its movement, and that was like 80s to, I want to say, early 90s. And then Grunge came out and killed it. Uh, but, I mean, those bands today, like Metallica, Slayer, I don't know, they got retired, but like you know, Anthrax and so on and so forth, they are all still making music currently. Even Ozzy. Uh, it's not thrash, but you know I'm trying to say here. Um, it it talked about the different uh, coasts, pretty much. On so the west coast, he had bands like Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer. On the east, it Anthrax, Overkill, and uh, even the crossovers of like thrash and hard hardcore, like bands like Chromatic or whatever, Suicidal Tendencies. And it's so cool seeing you know uh, just hearing these guys talk because you know they're normal people after all. When the average person sees a metal show, it's all, you know, and, they're, and they get scared and like, oh my god, and Satan, you know. But no, um, these bands are flat broke. These are the bands, like Metallica, Slayer, so on and so forth, that grew up on people like Pre Judas Priest, um, Black Sabbath, Zeppelin, Hendrix, you know, and they wanted more. They wanted to take that and turn to something fast and hard and heavy. And thus gave birth to uh, thrash. And today, bands like, you know, uh, Pantera, uh, In Flames, uh, Gojira, um, Lamb of God, Devil Driver, they will all quote and say how thrash music or bands like Metallica and Slayer influenced them. It's not by coincidence, it's just what people listen to, you know, and what a great era to live through the 80s and early 90s. I was born in 87, so like I said, a latecomer, but unless you're born under a rock, we have the internet. Back then, they didn't have the internet, so to find these bands back then was challenging. They traded cassette tapes, remember those? And by the time you got a cassette tape, it was like the 14th generation, so the sound was like muddy, you know, but still awesome. And they would trade. They would trade posters. Sometimes one band would go see the other band play and stuff. It was a really weird, tight-knit kind of world. You know, rivalries, uh, friendships, collaborations. And it was such a great era. And this documentary um, kind of lays it all on the line there. And it was really fun and awesome. And uh, I definitely recommend it. Uh, even if you're not interested in metal per se or if you're just you know of these bands i mentioned or rock music um yeah it's just it was like i said it's cool i mean i already know a good deal about you know metal's rise and fall uh, because now metal music has kind of been pushed underground people like mumble rap and weird pop music now unfortunately um uh but it's it's always ha had its roots in the underground like I said, I think in early 2000s, it might have found life again in new metal. You know, but, I mean, 
yes and no. Um, just, you know, people kind of shy away from new metal. But uh, I, I, I like them regardless, whatever. Uh, you know, I, I'm i old, I could pick whatever I like now, and I'm worried about the consequences. But bands like, you know, Lamb of God or Devil Driver, those are the guys, it's like the, the graduating step. Okay, I listen to Thrash, now this is it, over here. Slipknot even, you know. Uh, it's, it has evolved, but most of these groups I mentioned, like I said, still make music to this day. And that's awesome. Sometimes they'll find new audiences, old audiences will come and see the shows. You know, it's just, it's, it was such a great era. And to think that it still continues to influence, you know, young bands today, that's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, I'm not knocking, you know, hip hop, rap, R&B, pop. It's just, while those, all those groups definitely had, uh, especially rap had, you know, an East Coast, West Coast thing, but definitely had, I want to say similar beginnings, but rough, rough beginnings, because you always have to make your, prove yourself that you're wor worthy to be listened to. Uh, with metal, especially thrash metal, uh, it was a movement, it was a scene. Now, that scene changed a lot of people's lives, for better or worse, and... I'll, yes, it may be underground now. Most people might hear Metallica or Slayer and be like, what's that? But it's still there, and it still influences people today. And like I said, as far as I'm concerned, it's never going to go away. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you're just remotely interested in that kind of heavy music, if you want to try something new, watch Get Thrashed. It's on Prime right now, and I definitely uh, I would check it out. So the next one's completely opposite. So it's, it's the second documentary. Uh, and this one's called Until the Light Takes Us. It came out in 08. And it was directed by uh, Aaron Addis and uh, Audrey Ewell. And basically, this is the story of black metal. Or so I thought. So basically, uh, when I saw the cover, um, I was like, oh, cool, documentary about black metal. Now, I just got done talking about thrash metal. So you're probably like, well, what the hell is that? Uh, so black metal was a heavier, darker version of metal in general, pretty much, that kind of originated in Scandinavian countries. So like Sweden, Denmark, Norway, the Netherlands, out there. And it, had very ha and it carried that cold, frigid kind of feel to it. And also the themes would be completely different and controversial, too, which I will get to in a second. Um, you had a few core bands, and that's what mainly we follow people in this show like I said it's very not so documentarious but kind of like a you know uh, like oh I remember that you know you have one or two people telling the stories of how their band originated but it's not branched off too much maybe just how the movement started and then so on and so forth but it doesn't really get into depth so uh, you yeah, know it was kind of lackluster to me but um, I appreciate it just to see that part and how like I said, controversial, dark, and sometimes evil, you know? Because that's what this genre is all about, this black metal. Uh, so yeah, like I said, it did. It started in Norway. Um, even though I like to think uh, King Diamond, who's a you know metal artist, you should definitely check out, kind of maybe sped that up or kind of put in people's brains. But um, this movie follows two people. Um, uh, Varg Vickners, who was in, uh, or Zoom, which, uh, he's kind of famous for, you know, obviously that band, which is this ambient, you know, old world, uh, Nordic black metal band. So it's like black metal music, sometimes for like really weird, uh, outdoorsy landscape kind of sound. Uh, but he's also noted for burning down churches. Which he explains to this that he might have influenced people to burn down churches. Unless I heard otherwise. He may have partaken in that or not. Yeah, that was a thing. That was a black metal thing. Burning down churches was cool. Because it was evil, you know? That's what these guys were all about. Not really, but, you know, it's for the, the scare factor. Um, they're very, how he goes, very, he was very in tune with the Norse gods. Because there's a very Viking influence in black metal. <coughs> uh, Euronymous, which uh, the reason why uh, Vard Vickers 
is doing this documentary in jail. He didn't make it, but I'm just saying he's interviewed a lot. Is he killed this um, metal guitarist, this black metal guitarist, whose name is Euronymous, uh, over a dispute. It was like over paper. They want to like sign like paperwork, whatever. Long story short, he goes to see the guy, scares him or whatever. Maybe he was like planning. Supposedly, Euronymous was planning to kill uh, uh, this this guy. I was talking about uh, uh, Varge Vicker, uh, Vickners, and um, yeah, big mess. So this guy uh, Vickners, yeah, burning churches, killed a dude, and there you go. But um, Euronymous. Um, the name kind of sounds familiar. He was the guitarist and co-founder of this black metal band, which kind of was the staple of it, uh, called Mayhem. And you can just do a YouTube right now on Mayhem, and it's like a nightmare. So these guys, like I said, these guys dress uh, like this uh, makeup, uh, paint makeup, what they call it, like a corpse paint or whatever. And it's like kind of like their calling card, you know. And uh, it's, oh God, it's like, it's, it's interesting because it's such a bigger, like it was like a movement. And then we follow this other guy who was in Dark Throne, who was also kind of a big influence, stepping stone for black metal in Norway. Uh, Fern, uh, Fernriz, I believe. Uh, yeah, I'm almost certain that's his name. <laughs> like I said, I'm really bad with the, these are very Nordic names, so I'm bad at pronouncing them, forgive me. But uh, I'll, I'll leave a link so you guys can check it out yourself. Uh... And he just goes around, you know, just commenting on what uh, Varge says, uh, saying, oh, how this band influenced this movement. There was a uh, kind of like a store, kind of like a early Hot Topic, I want to say. Not quite, but in the vein of that, where it genre toward black metal. And this is, it was like a, a meeting point, too. Not just, didn't sell stuff, but it got people into, I guess, the, uh, the genre, the movement. Because that's what it felt like. Um, the way they were saying it, it was kind of portrayed as like a black metal mafia, pretty much burning churches and causing uh, havoc. But also the media kind of blew it out of proportion. I, I got that a lot too from this. Uh, it was very interesting, nonetheless. I knew little about. I'm just now getting into black metal. I had a hard time connecting with it, um, not because I'm you know I'm a Christian enough. I don't find it offensive. Um, like I said, a lot of black metal bands obviously are very anti-religious, anti-Christian. That's just their montav. It's just, you know, you can't escape it. It's not black metal. It's not blasphemy, pretty much, you know. Uh, but a lot are into the old stuff. I know black metal bands that sing songs about H.P. Lovecraft. Or, you know, old Viking Norse, you know, themes or whatever. But whatever, like I said... Um, it's definitely a whole other world. Dark, somber, moody even. Uh, that definitely describes this. And hearing these these guys, uh, Euronymous, uh, Vickners, uh, Fenris, uh, just talk about the movement and the actions they did. Uh, yeah, it's like, this happened? And this was like, I mean, not recent, but like 90s I'm talking about. In Norway of all places. Like the safe haven of Europe, I guess. Maybe not now, but back then. And, um, yeah, the country didn't, obviously, was very offended by it. And it broadcast them on the news, called them all a bunch of satanic worshippers. And it was, from what they say, it was so much more. Well, it w they withstand the test of time. They're still around today. New black metal bands have emerged since then. And it's a genre on its own that's still thriving. A lot of copycats, but uh, because they're a very anti-establishment, very anti-anything. If it was commercial, they were against it. One of them goes on to explain how they recorded on this cheapest equipment, just to, so the sound could sound like shit, because that's what it was about. Somber, freight train, disorganized, you know, um, audio assault. That's black metal. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um... Entertaining nonetheless. It was a cool. It felt more like a movie than a documentary because this didn't was not a broad span of a bunch of bands. It explained how they came to how black metal was kind of given life and these key bands and characters that were in these bands or, you know, uh, ran stuff pretty much. Some create, you know, 
cre uh, created atrocities, burnt churches, killed people. Others took a more artistic approach to it. Um, and others whose names will never, ever go away. And uh, that's black metal for you. It's, it's, it's kind of sticks with you. It's like watching a, like a horror movie. That after it's over, you're still thinking about it. You might not get black metal right off the bat, but... You know, because they dress like Halloween all the time, but still. Uh, it's not just an act. People are very passionate with this. The fans are very passionate. Like, they'll, they'll, they won't think twice about telling you if you're a poser or not. So, it's, it, you know, nonetheless, it's interesting. Uh, they'll recommend it. Only, like I said, this is, isn't for everybody. Black metal music is not for everybody. I would do the PG uh, black metal first before I would get into this. <coughs> like, I would tell you to listen to Cradle of Filth or Doom Over Gear before I would tell you to listen to Mayhem or Abbott, you know. Uh, but like I said, it's a whole other world that probably we never experienced. And I'm, I'm glad I've seen it because I understand it a little bit better. I could appreciate it a little bit more. And I think that's cool. I think that's where the misunderstanding comes through. Uh, both, any genre of metal is a misunderstanding. Because after all, it's music played by people. And I think uh, the more we understand that, and their, their train of thoughts and what they're trying to say, because everyone in the metal music is obviously trying to say a message. They're not going to write it down and say a speech. They're going to scream it, yell it, put in their music, however they can get across. And this is the outcome. And, you know, can't be mad at them. This is their form of expression. And, you know, we live in a world that prides itself on free speech. So, there you go. All right, well, that's uh, Until the Light Takes Us. Uh, you could watch that one on Tubi. It's free, so you can watch it anytime you want, actually. Uh, the other one, Get Thrashed, is on Prime. So, like I said, if you're a Prime member, watch that. Uh, like I said, if you guys got nothing to do, if you're interested in any of these kind of musics, or for the first time you want to try something new in your life, if you, maybe if you're into hip-hop or R&B or pop and you're interested in the metal world, I definitely watch Get Thrashed first before Until the Light Takes Us because you might be actually frightened. But it might be a bit of a turnoff until the light takes us. I would watch Get Thrashed first and then that one. Unless you're in the horror movies, then Until the Light Takes Us would be like, like watching a serial killer documentary. But anyway, uh, these two I, I thought were great. The uh, production value is definitely of the era, you know, 08, 06. So I don't expect flashy effects here. Just honest opinions uh, from uh, band members. And it's very exciting. There you go, guys. Um, thanks for listening. I uh, thought I'd try something new with you guys. Instead of the average movie, um, I reviewed two documentaries. Two music documentaries. How about that? All right. Well, uh, until next time, guys. Uh, be nice to each other. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Peace.